Coming up on today's Airborne, it was an electrifying win for Hans Arch in the Red Bull Air Race opener. The Balloon Federation responds to the NTSB's call for letters of authorization, and the advanced Black Knight Transformer took its first flight. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Red Bull Air Races are back with the second event now under their belts in Rovin, Croatia. Tom Patton reports. It was a day full of surprises in Rovin as Hans Arch won a very narrow victory over Paul Bonham. The winning margin was just eight hundredths of a second. Japan's Yoshi Moroya made the podium for the first time in his race career, finishing third and pushing Canada's Pete McLeod into fourth place. Austria's Arch came from behind to defeat the defending champion in a riveting final in the second stop of the eight-leg Red Bull Air Race World Championship. Arch was trailing Bonham at the midway point of the final round by 23 hundredths of a second, but opened up the throttle with a full-power second lap on the obstacle course set up on the Adriatic Sea. This marks Arch's eighth career victory and even the score with his British rival at the top of the 2014 championship standings at 21 points each. The Austrian, who won the 2008 championship, posted the fastest time of the day. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The Balloon Federation of America's Board of Directors has released an official statement regarding the NTSB's recommendation to the FAA that balloon tour ride operators be required to obtain and comply with a letter of authorization. In the BFA response to the NTSB's recommendation, the BFA said that this requirement would not improve safety. It will prove burdensome to the industry and the FAA, and is unnecessary given the BFA's ongoing safety education programs. The BFA says they have recently established a new balloon ride operators division. This division seeks to represent tour ride operators, large and small. The division's many goals already in development include recommended safe operating guidelines and improved consumer education. The BFA has long held that safety education and training is a constant priority for balloon pilots and crews and encourages its members to participate in annual BFA-approved safety seminars as a means of obtaining recurrent safety education training. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back with more news and our feature of the day. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Advanced Tactics has successfully completed the first flight test of the Black Knight Transformer, a modular and rotable vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The AT Black Knight Transformer completed driving test in December of 2013, and completed its first flight test last month. The Black Knight Transformer is the world's largest multi-copter that is controlled and stabilized with propeller speed. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 4,400 pounds. The flight test was performed at a private location and the aircraft was remotely piloted for safety. The stability and attitude of the aircraft was controlled entirely by the autopilot. The only commands from the remote human pilot were to increase or decrease power. 
Like an electric multicopter, the vehicle is stabilized and controlled by differential thrust between opposing sets of prop rotors. Sometimes it's fun to look back at the places we've gone, the planes we've flown, and the pilots we've met here at Aero TV. We call it our Aero TV Classic episode. It's all about feel and judging distances and getting good weather reports. We really plan on where we're going to land, not where we're going to take off. We want to land in a good area because landings are required. In today's classic episode, Jim Campbell gets the lowdown on balloon flying by asking Pat Hartwell, how do you compete in a balloon? Search Pat Hartwell Balloon on Aero TV's news channel. The only control we have is up and down. The commemorative Air Force's iconic B-29 Super Fortress, Fifi, the only flying B-29 in the world, returned from her Florida tour on Monday to join the B-24 Diamond Lil at their temporary new home in Fort Worth, Texas. The airplanes will remain there for at least a couple of years until the new CAF National Air Base location is determined and hangar space to accommodate the airplanes becomes available. Charlin Chucky Hospers, director of the Vintage Flying Museum in Fort Worth, said, quote, It's an amazing opportunity to host this historic aircraft. Our hangar was originally built to house B-29 bombers, so we think Fifi will feel right at home, end quote. You can check on Fifi's 2014 tour schedule by visiting www.airpowersquadron.org. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's a and new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Welcome back! On March 20th, Dassault Aviation organized a formation flight of the Neuron Unmanned Combat Air Vehicle with a Raphael fighter and a Falcon 7X business jet. This was the first time in the world that a combat drone flew in formation with other aircraft. According to Dassault, it was a challenge being able to control a pilotless aircraft flying near four other aircraft, which included two photography planes. Engineers had to plan ahead to take into account the risk of communication interference with the CUAV and aerodynamic turbulence between the aircraft. The success of the flight indicates that they were up to the challenge. The Aurora Project has a goal of keeping a dream alive and remembering the person that started that dream. Jane Wicker had a dream of creating an aircraft that would inspire young and old alike. Jane found the perfect project in a ragtag Boeing PT-17 that ended up as a beautiful 450 horsepower Super Stearman. As Jane fulfilled her dream by displaying and demonstrating the aircraft throughout the United States, Aurora began to capture the hearts and minds of all who viewed her, and literally started to become America's airplane, not just Jane's. Then on June 22, 2013, Jane Wicker, her beloved plane Aurora, and pilot Charlie Schwenker were lost in a tragic accident. Now a team led by Rock Scobo is working to restore Aurora and return her to the skies. The intent is to create a flying memorial to the legacy of Jane and Charlie and continue the aviation inspiration of children and adults through display and aerial demonstration. The Save Aurora Project is looking for assistance in the form of monetary donations, assistance, and aircraft components. More details and information about the Save Aurora Project 
can be found on their website at www.aviatorman.com slash Aurora. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.